all right no what's good youtube welcome back to another this week with bungie i am your glad reader or happy reader silence uh today we're gonna dig deep into the first 12 of 2021 first off i want to say happy holidays all that fun jazz we made it through the 2020 now we're into a new year it just started it don't mean all the bad stuff is going away but moving on with some better energy and hopefully everything goes goes better this year for a lot of stuff let's move right into it i have not gone over this i have not seen any parts of it just yet this is fresh to me we about to get down into the swab but first i want to make sure and i remind you that we are live right now as this is being recorded here on twitch.tv slash roads of silence now you might be thinking that's different than a youtube channel well yes i just recently changed my name on twitch trying out something different because as we all know i'm gonna kill that meme of waffles anyway um so make sure you come hang out with us if you can when this goes live um i'll still be streaming for the evening with some Dis destiny 2 pvp and maybe some PV light PVE, but I'm all, you can also follow me over on Twitter and all that stuff. Everything will be down in the description below. And there's also a nice little info widget down over there in that bottom left corner of the video. So if you can't seem to remember to like, share and subscribe or, you know, follow the Twitch channel, make sure you go over there and do that right now as we as we go along, you know, just just, just hop right to it. Anyway, this week at Bungie, it's been a while, hasn't it, since the TWAB? has last been seen. Got your hands on the Hawk Moon. The dawn and went through. Next generation consoles got some updates and some wonderful enhancements. And yes, the crow from their cage and Lord Salad Bar watched as you decimated people with stasis and iron banner. On the bungee side of things, they took a breather. Everybody went home for the holidays and just relaxed. It was full of fun challenges that nobody expected. And even though everything in 2020 had just was just throwing curveballs at everybody and beyond light and the season of the hunt was in your hands, it did not come at a bit of a cost or it did come at a bit of a cost. They needed to so some time to recharge the batteries and so for the new year and no doubt 2021, it's a bunch of mountains to climb. All right. An unexpected surprise, but they're all excited to get back into the groove for a new year for a new destiny development. All right. So let's get this party started. Let's get this started in here. They got some things first up. They'll be talking about uh, some vendors, Dreaming City, the Moon Rewards, and the um, Sandbox Tuning for Hunter Stasis abilities in the Crucible. So first up, we got the rewards update for the Dreaming City and the Moon. Uh, so first they talking about, I'm going to skip that entire first paragraph. Y'all can go back and read that shit if you want. <laughs> but not up in here. All right. So first, let's review. A list of what you'll be seeing in season 13 is what they're saying is reissue Dreaming City, Reverie Dawn. Yes, that's one of my favorite looking armors. I'm about to get styling again. And the Moon Dream Bane armor. Throw that shit in the trash. All right. These will also drop with high stat rolls when earned in the Shattered Throne and the Pit of Heresy. So you know what that means. My Pit of Heresy God is about to get put out there into the world again. I started, I was debating on it. I started making it. I actually do have a finished product. And I was like, you know what? Let me see if they reprise this stuff because it's things that are in our right in our hands. So good to know. Shattered Throne as well. I need to dig back in there, get my feet wet and get the territory known so that I can put something out for you guys to have something to help you through it. All my new players, some of my returning folks that don't re remember any of that stuff. We're going to have you covered. All right. Instead. Oh, wait, the final chest in the Pit of Heresy will no longer drop a fully masterwork Dreambane armor piece. Instead, the Dreambane armor piece that drops will have seven armor energy and is guaranteed to drop with at least plus 16 and two different stats. OK, and the high like and their higher stats overall. All right. Period. So we'll see. We got to see it when we see it to believe it. You know what I mean? Dreambane class items will not drop from this chest. So unfortunately for that, you still got to get those out in the, in the world loop pool. The reissue four weapons for the Dreaming City with new perk pools will be the Waking Vigil, the Sleepless, the Vouchsafe, my favorite scout rifle, one of my favorite scout rifles, and the Retold Tell, that monster of a shotgun, all right? Dreaming City weapons that drop in the Shattered Throne dungeon can roll with perks that are unavailable from drops from other reward sources as well, all right? So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Reissued four weapons 
for the moon with new perks. You got the premonition, nasty 390 scout rifle. I mean, uh, pulse rifle from the Peta Heresy only. <sighs> Oof, that's tight. I actually respect that though. Um, you have the Heretic, which I believe is a rocket launcher, the Blasphemer, which is a shotgun kinetic, and then the Apostate, which is a arc sniper rifle, kind of like the Distant Turbulent, if I'm not mistaken, if that's what it's called. Kind of reminds me of that sniper rifle, but with a reskin. Um, weapons that drop in the Pit of Heresy dungeon can roll with perks that are unavailable from drops from other reward sources. All right, expanding the Lost Sector legend and master rotation to four law sectors. That's four law sectors. If you can't count four law sectors on the moon, the K1 lot logistics, K1 communication, the K1 cruise quarters, and the K1 revelations, essentially all of the law sectors on the moon. Okay. We're making these changes to help preserve, and this is what they're saying. We're making these changes to help preserve the relevancy of the destinations, specify Specifically, some of the pinnacle in act in game activities that still exist here to get more specific around the actual experience activities where reissues are acquired. We will be heavily weighted towards rewarding reissue gear over capped gear, though the exact weighing and the mechanisms may differ. For example, in Dreaming City, if you already have obtained an infusion cap weapon, it will not drop for you again. So keep that in mind. If you've obtained the infusion capped weapon, that weapon will not drop for you again. Um, which I think is kind of, kind of cool, but kind of not. So it's like, they're saying that it won't drop for you. Like, what does that mean? Is it, are they saying that the reissue weapon will drop once you pick it up? That's it. All right. Are they static rolls? Are they not static rolls? Are we not to farm for these for a little bit? Like what's going on there with this? Um, if they're static rolls, that's absolutely fine. If these are just beginner weapons that people who are just starting out to come back in can use, that'd be great. All right. Um, let's see what they got to say at the bottom of this. They say, well, not every loot legendary reward will be kept up to date for the entire lifetime. Their destinations are available. We will, uh, we do believe there's a high value in targeting some specific activity drops for continued relevancy to give you more options for where to spend time as you seek to improve your arsenal. So again, it's just, this still falls back. The question for me is, you know, does this fall into line with, is it going to be for starter people, you know, to come in and grab this stuff and carry on? Um, it's going to be static and all that kind of stuff. They're saying it's got a new loot pool, but again, you're saying if the weapon drops, you won't be able to gearn it again. So how does that work when I want to reprise the loot again and get a better roll if it is not static? I don't know. We'll see when we get our hands on it in the game. Turning those tokens. Let's see what this is talking about. Are we talking about Crucible? Oh, God. Yes, we are. Here we go. So we're going to skip over what Justin's talking about, or actually, no, we're going to kind of haze down on what Justin's talking about. And from what I can see here, the rewards for continuous ritual playlist completion has been a subject that's come up several times. I guess they're, they're looking at, you know, all those tokens you've accumulated, but don't spend with those vendors. Um, I know I have a couple of them. I don't know. Does the, does Gambit have a vendor drop? Like, I don't, I don't ever remember Gambit having a vendor dump. That'd be kind of cool if we had tokens for the drifter to dump in there for, for Gambit weapons, but there are none, right? Like we, we don't, we don't get new Gambit weapons, right? That, that's not a thing anymore. Um, and then, you know, you got your shack stuff that you can go in there and dump at him, which you constantly get stuff for. So let, let's see what they talk about there. So these weapons are in addition to the addition to the ones added in the season of the hunt and they continue to have a small chance to drop at the end of each activity. Okay. So when you play the activities, you get something. So that, that, that sounds good. Second, starting at the in season 13 for Gambit and Crucible for Valor in the future seasons for strikes, rank rewards will be visible on the ritual vendors. OK, each season, you'll be greeted by a row of rewards progression towards which will be earned automatically as you complete relevant playlist activities. Instead of having rank rewards drop automatically into your loot system, they will now be picked up manually from the vendor list. We feel this gives much better visibility into what you'll be earning as you progress and helps you make better choices about where to spend your time. Um, not sure I follow that completely, but we'll come back and revisit that. Um, I'm interested in that. That sounds kind of cool, but it sounds like you're gatekeeping me into doing an activity and you're forcing me to get that specific weapon at a specific rank, which I don't want. I just want to I want my rewards. Let me get my rewards. Maybe, maybe make it easier for me to choose what I want to get. That's about it. Like that's as typically been always been the case of the chase is we want to, I made that rhyme. I know we always just want to know what we're getting and we want it to be a little bit more simplified instead of just sitting in something for hours on end just to get something and we don't get it, you know? So carrying on with that, but 
I guess they sh they're showing it here. Here's the rank rewards right there. The reputation rewards as, as follows as well. And it goes up as you see. So I'm assuming may, you go pick them up there. Is this continuous? Like once you f reset that rank, so to speak. So like Vanguard doesn't reset, but f uh, in comp, it resets. And cru I mean, when I say comp, I mean crucible. Um, it resets. So as you earn each one of these rewards, will it reset every time you reset? Um, and so on. So I'm, I'm curious about that. Uh, but I, maybe I should scroll down a little bit further and it'll answer that question for me, right? Progression is on a per ritual basis. You can be ranked 10 for Crucible and ranked 4 for Gambit. For example, you reset your rank at the vendor by picking up the final reward. Okay, so it does reset. Rewards for individual rituals are as follows for rank 4, 3 times modern. Yeah, you can see all that. So you get a reward every rank, every couple of ranks, and it resets once you pick up the final reward. Good. So that you know you're getting these at incremental levels. I like that. I like that a lot. So now people have designated spots. And from what I'm seeing here, look at Crucible. You get two prisms from this. So, I mean, you might spend, for those who spend a lot of time in there, this is probably way more than enough. Same with the Ascended Shard. You probably are gonna get this stupid fast. And as far as comp goes, I mean, that's an incentive. I, I, I mean, I might wanna dig in here just to get that Ascended Shard from time to time, who knows? But depending on how sweaty you can get. Moving on. All right. Due to this automated progression, though, Crucible tokens and Crucible token gifts are no longer needed and will be depreciated into junk that will delete as a full stack starting in Season 13. So cash those tokens in before the end of the season. All right. So if you are sitting on a crazy amount of Crucible tokens like me with a, a, a five five digit number, you should probably turn those in and get your freaking shards um, or armor or weapon rolls that you want. Um, so moving on, taking a pass, Revenant, Shatter Jive, and Fishers. So now we're talking about stasis for Hunters, and I guess that's it for now, just Hunters. Um, the conversation and feedback on rewards was the only thing we're tracking over the holiday break. Many of you have been spending time in the Crucible, experimenting with stasis and all the ways in which it can be changed. The flow of PvP, uh... Or oh, change the flow of a PvP match. I'm sorry, I kind of read that like in a weird way, right? Uh, prior to the break, though, we had a round of tuning for Warlocks. Next up, we are looking at Hunters. So, I guess they, they for now, they shelve Warlock tuning. They're going to tune Hunters, and then they'll probably tune Titans, and then probably revisit the entire stack again after they've gotten each round of this out. So, is, is how I'm perceiving this, which I'm not super... I'm not super ecstatic about because I think you should be. I mean, I, I know they just came back from break, so I'm giving I'm, I'm allowing them the time. And I guess this is how they they've allotted their time. So maybe if they get the tuning done and it's to their liking and they don't have to don't have to make any minimal adjustments, they can get the tuning for the next class done super early and then revisit all three classes again to get them another level of tuning. Because um, I feel like there's still more tuning to be done across the board as for, to Stasis as a whole. And just tapping into each each subclass or each class um, is not going to be enough. You know, tapping into them once is not going to be enough. You're going to have to go back and revisit it constantly over and over and over again. I just want to know what the timeline for this is and what the process of that looks like. That'd be kind of cool. Um, so short-term goals they want to address is that outliers for stasis abilities to keep subclasses decisions making interesting. They reduce the potency of Shatter Dive whis uh, plus Whisper of Fissures against Guardians going live with the update 3.0.2. Um, so Shatter Dive now has a fall off versus unfrozen targets. Uh, max range damage reduced from 50 to 5. And then damage reduction during ability reduced from 15 50% to 25%. The Whisper of Fissures has a reduced max and minimal range minimal damage versus a non super player of 42 to 22. Bunch of numbers probably just going to stop here y'all can read it's over there numbers are over there but 42 to 22 for non-super players um for super players it's 42 to 22 to i'm uh, my bad 42 to 22 for non-super players from 42 to 22 to 30 to 4 uh for non-super players for super players 42 to 22 from 42 to 22 to 16 and 2 um so these obviously those those values were the same which I don't understand why they would be. And then the reduced detonation radius for players, just in general, across the board is t from 10 to nine. So not that much, just by one meter. 
Um, this is start, I guess. All right, they're investigating the efficacy of the Stasis Titan Behemoth Super. All right, they want to want the they want to let the above changes settle first. Like I said, they they're they're going in, they're adjusting one at a time, seeing how it sits, going into the next one, testing that, and they'll probably come back around as a full circle and go from there. They say the midterm goal is to improve PP, PvP subclass usage and win rate balance. Addressing Stasis ability outliers will help lower the ceiling. All right, is from is what they're saying and under, with underperforming light classes. For the midterm goal, uh, the review, they are reviewing the ability to to gunplay balance as well. So with all of that being done, there's there as they go along and adjust this up, the stasis subclass as a whole for all the classes, they are still looking at the ability to gunplay ratio as well. And maybe that might come in after they touch Titans. Maybe it might not. We don't know yet. Give them time. I know a lot of you are impatient. Give them time. All right. They just got back. So yeah, there you go, all right? I've also already seen comments on Twitter about you know priorities and stuff like that, or not even priorities, but about what commun the community has spoken about and uh, out things that they don't, they didn't see on this swab right away, like as a coming back statement. And it's like, just be patient, man. We got more time coming up, so let it rock, all right? Worldwide community, and in this part here, I see sometimes it can be difficult to think of how large the destiny community is and is very large um it seems no matter where you may be in the world you might bump into a fellow hunter warlock or titan all right the last year we bolstered our efforts into the addition of two international community managers um and now join it join us in welcoming a third to the team introducing our new russian community manager ivan yavinsky again right did i say that right okay and this is just the introduction of ivan all right so if you if you are from Russia, fellow Russian guardian, go say what's up to that homie. All right, we got a new community manager in the mix. So for our Russian guardians, not much for me to say on that one. All right, keeping it updated. They got an update coming on today. <laughs> now this update went out earlier today, uh, 3.0.2. So everything we talked about up up top there, uh, outliers for what was getting dropped into and and touched right now, and then things coming into the future as they plan on tapping into all the little things here and there. So please be patient. Let them get to it. They just got back into the shop, AKA their work spaces at their homes. Um, so let them deal with whatever it is. All right. Below though, we do have some of the, of the up and coming resolved issues. So below is a list of some of the issues expected to be resolved during this patch, which was the high boss in Anan. I don't know how to say that when the brood queen and Zelix were not counting as a high boss kill and bounties. Okay, so that should have been fixed. Some players couldn't respawn if they died during the boss fight of the inverted spire strike. I don't know about that one. I haven't been playing it to see to know. Uh, players could get out of environment of the environment in several crucible maps. We've know we've saw this. If you guys was hanging out during some crucible games, we saw this a lot. Like people were just sitting at the top of the map shooting at us. That one map with the crane dude was up there just bucking down at us the whole freaking match. Like, come on. Like, none of that should be happening. Um, and I feel like if you do it too many times, the game should automatically register you as a person doing it and just like ban you for a week or a day. Like you should get some bans for certain little things like that abuse. You know, it's, it's abusive play. All right. Essence quests such as Essence of Rage, Essence of Insanity and Essence of Servitude. Um, some quest items were not dropping in the moon. Free roam activity. This prevented completion of several Essence quests. Remember when I was trying to make the guide about that one particular one. We pointed out that you could not get that particular essence because the item you needed to complete the quest was behind the locked door that you couldn't get unless you had the campaign and it wasn't spawning because that enemy wasn't spawning either and that campaign wasn't available. So apparently if they put it out in the world in the free roam area, they fixed it. So now that enemy should be out in this free roam area. And I believe it was essence of rage. Or insanity, whatever weapon is, I think it's included with the Dream Bane weapon. I want to say it's that weapon. It might have been Server 2, though. Either way, um, the Unrelenting perk was not triggering health regeneration. <laughs> it's fixed, please. I'll know this when we get, get on the day. Hopefully, I want to use my pulse rifle that has it. I have a couple of other guns that have it as well. I would like to try out those rolls, and it, it's just been breaking my heart that I can't use it. So, boom, we got Unrelenting. The Mita Multi-Tools Catalyst wasn't dropping from the competitive Crucible wins. I don't know nothing about that. Don't even care. Uh, take Scion, taking Scions were replicating too rapidly in some Prophecy Dungeon encounters. Oof. 
Garden of Salvation flawless completions were not awarding the inherent per perfection triumph. Huh. Imagine completing a Garden of Salvation. Huh. And then High Celebrant sometimes wouldn't take damage nor go to the Ascendant Plane. Uh, fix an exploit where players could have shelter from the storm permanently applied in the uh, Deep Stone Crypt Raid. Ah! No! <laughs> they took it away! They fixed an issue where Cloud Strike hits on the Divinity Cage counted as two precision hits. Damn, I didn't do that. That shit, that, that's probably why that drone was feeling OD. Uh, fixed an issue where the Grandmaster Nightfall timer was set for 30 minutes. And then fixed an issue where PlayStation 5 was preventing clan rosters from loading. Put it back. Put the put the shelter from the storm back, please. This means I gotta do that raid normally. Fuck that noise. Alright, Bungie. This is the only thing I'm upset about. We gotta talk. Alright. Dust and echoes. Alright, we got almost nine years, stats and files from our previous franchise, Halos, all that stuff. It lived on a remembrance at halo.bungie.net about all that stuff there's a list of all of the known issues i'm not going to read these over in this video as it is probably already 20 something minutes long and i'm going to try to chop out some pieces here and there for you guys so it's just a little bit shorter than what it usually is and that's going to wrap it up for me today like usual check out the guys in the movie of the week check out the artists Check out everything at the bottom of the TWAB. Like usual, go to the website. The link for the TWAB will be down below in the description as well. All right. And like always, appreciate you guys sticking around for the video, watching the video through and through. Make sure you click that like button. Okay. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, I would appreciate it if you could click that subscribe button. We trying to get to new heights this year. All right. We reached a goal last year of 50 subscribers. By the end of the year, we actually blew past that and hit 60. So now... It's time to keep climbing. So appreciate you guys watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.